was the biggest takeaway for me from that conversation that Seth and Lindsay had was that DNI is not just a nice to do. It's not a nice to have. It's not a good thing to do for society or humanity as a whole. It's just good business. It presents a wonderful business opportunity and businesses who focus on DNI just from all backgrounds of people, not necessarily, you know, the differences we see, they just do better in the world. They make more money, they have better customers. All righty. So, for some of you, it's almost time to head over to more digital breakout sessions. But for those who are chilling with us, we've got a really fun conversation about WebView 2, as promised, coming up with Lemon Zoo. But first, have you heard about the film festival? There's tons of uh, cool videos that are rolling in. It's been fun to watch them, but please keep them coming. We're excited to share the creme de la creme. I can't say it like Seth tomorrow. Stay with us. Let's see the film festival video. Hi, I'm Melanie. I'm here to chat about some of the great fun and wellness offerings we have for you here at Build. Over the course of the event, we'll be hosting a series of panels and fireside chats focused on accessibility, mental health, career growth, mentorship, and social impact. Did you know that Thursday is Global Accessibility Awareness Day? We'll have our own Megan Lawrence talk with us as a part of our Spotlight series about the evolution of accessibility at Microsoft, our latest innovations, and how we take accessibility as a core part of how we design and build our products to provide access to education and employment for folks with disabilities. You can find the schedule for this talk and the other offerings in this series listed on the Fun and Wellness category under Community Connections. Hello, I'm now joined by Lemin Zhu. Thank you for joining us, Lemin. Hello again. How's hey, friend. Going? How's it going? Great, great. Glad to be here. Awesome. Thank you. How's your build? It's been awesome so far. Yeah. A lot of uh, interesting content out there and been on Twitter all day looking at all of the reactions. Exactly. Have you seen all the excitement about WebView? Yes. Yes. I'm There's getting been... a lot of tweets already. Exactly. And my segment even isn't out yet. <laughs> Look at that. So first, <laughs> tell us tell us a little bit about you. Who are you? What team do you work on? How long have you been with Microsoft? Yeah. So, hi, my name is Lee Min. I've been working with Microsoft for the past six years, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, so obviously, I'm a, I'm a program manager working on the Microsoft Edge WebView 2 team. Mm -hmm. And before that, I worked on the Chakra Core JavaScript engine. I worked on TypeScript. So just a very... Uh, passionate person about you know web technologies yeah. and working with developers. About web stuff all up, which is fantastic. Yes. So one of the things I really love about the Edge team, and you embody exactly this, is that you are so customer driven. And not just from a, oh, we listen to customers, but we listen to customers, list out their feedback, then we act on them. And mm -hmm. I absolutely love how all of you do that. And um, I really, really, really like the fact that you all focus so heavily on building things that customers want. So do you want to talk a little bit about how WebView 2 is directly correlated from that, from that process that all of you follow? Yeah, totally. So all of the WebView 2 stuff, like the, the reason we're building WebView 2 comes from a customer pain point, right? So if you think about what WebView even is, it's sort of a technology that allowed developers to host you know, web content in their native application. And WebView 2 is the uh, Microsoft Edge Chromium uh, version of that. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of developers, they're building like very powerful application that needs to be cross-platform. This is a very common thing that people do these days. Um, but if you think about what's available to them, some developers will build you know, web tech, doing yeah. you know, cross-platform stuff with websites, PWAs. And some other developers will build on native tech, which is, you know, has access to more capabilities like advanced windowing um, and uh, you know file system access, but none of these you know really work out for those developers that are building again powerful applications working across multiple platform, right. and that's where WebView two come in to help these developers to you know kind of being the bridge of both web and native. And all of our development has been just talking to developers, understanding what they need, and build the features that will help them be successful. So you're really setting up to solve a dev problem. You are devs yes. building things for devs, which is, I think, the best way that dev stuff should be built, personally. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about what, what's new? What, what's the latest in WebView 2 compared to WebView 1 and browser controls of yesteryear in general? Yeah, so uh, if you think about like the, the web views that's kind of out there today in production, mm -hmm. we have the web browser control and the HTML control. Right. The web browser control is, you know, it's it, like these are all great technologies, but has their own limitations. Like the web browser control is based on IE, 
I think yeah. that's like enough said, right? Like mm -hmm. it's it's a somewhat of a legacy platform that doesn't have all the modern features that developers want. And on the other hand, we have the Edge HTML control, which is more modern, but it's only available on Windows 10. And the Win32 control is only available on the late iteration of Windows 10. And it has the classic uh, fragmentation problem of tying to the OS, where on a different version of OS, you have a different version of WebView. So when we talk to developers, they're all like, hey, we, we want none of the problems you just described. We want a modern WebView that is you know, available and consistent right. to, uh, on, across all Windows versions. So that's exactly what they're getting with WebView 2. It's based on the Microsoft Edge Chromium platform. It doesn't really get any more modern than that. Exactly. It's available and consistent across all Windows versions, starting with Windows 7. And on top of that, the, by default, the platform is also you know, always up to date. You get the latest and greatest features while also staying secure, and you can still com you can still stay compatible by just kind of testing ahead with the non-stable channel, which is what developer what web developers in particular have been doing with their browsers and websites for this whole time. And for developers that has another set of needs, for example, like healthcare and these set of folks, which are in a very constrained environment, we kind of hear their pain point of, hey, I need a um, total control on my platform. Mm -hmm. I need to optimize for very, very strict app compat. And we're giving these developers a second option of, you know, a bring your own WebView or a, um, we call it fixed version WebView 2 these days, where they can actually package, uh, ship, and, uh, and update the binary, the WebView 2 binaries with your application. So they're 100% in control here. So these are, you know, the kind of big, um, differences with uh, WebView 2 uh, compared to, you know, the last iteration of WebView technologies on Windows. Yeah. So what I, I love the example you gave earlier um, around being able to switch out components with, with an Outlook, right? Mm -hmm. The room finder example back in the day when we used to find rooms for meetings, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just without having to reship a whole new thing. Do you have a mm -hmm. demo or something that you can show us? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me actually uh, just switch to my screen real quick okay, here. Okay, cool. Um, and Lemin's got a session too where he will deep dive into this. Yep. But yeah, so um, I want to talk about Outlook because I think it's a, it's just a great success story of using WebView 2. And this this helps give you a bit more you know, uh, context and visualize all the stuff that we just kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. So uh, Outlook, as probably many of you know, like it's it has a lot of, uh, products under its wing, right? It has the desktop client, which oh, is yeah. on the right hand side here, yep. and it has a Outlook web app, which is on the left hand side. Yep. So, because Outlook supports you know a lot of platforms, uh, including the website, sometimes they have to write multiple implementation for just this, the same features. Yes. And by the sound of it, that just doesn't sound very that efficient. That is the right, least Donna? fun thing ever: writing six versions of something for your six versions of your product. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> A hundred percent. Yeah. And especially for the desktop application, mm -hmm. uh, the the kind of update cycle is just very, very slow. It oh, takes yeah. forever for yes. anything to just roll out to their customers, mm -hmm. which just kind of result in the Outlook uh, desktop client to have some experiences that's, you know, lagging behind the, mm -hmm. the web experience. So obviously it's an ideal Outlook isn't crazy about the idea. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean to create a, criticize the Outlook team here because like this is by no means a unique Outlook problem. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing with WebView 2 actually is they're able to um, bring the, uh, they're able to use WebView 2 to bring the Outlook web apps components over to the native, to the desktop application to enrich experience. So if you're looking at the Room Finder as one of those examples, on the left-hand side, I have the, Outlook web app. I have this room finder, which is all pretty shiny, pretty nice. And on the right hand side, and this is an internal build, by the way, which is why you won't find it Ooh, on your machine secret. right now. Secret. Look at this. Yes, yeah. secrets. Mm -hmm. um, but if you click on the room finder thing right here, this pops up a WebView 2 window hosting the same uh, web room finder component in here. You can see the experience is very, it's very much the same. It runs the same code. Um, the integration is done very seamlessly. And it just overall, like a the kind of hosting workflow is very easily replicated for just about anything Outlook. So I think it's a big win. You know, Outlook get to maximize your productivity by just dumping the legacy code for 
their room, their you know existing room finder experience on the desktop and just focusing on a single code base going forward. They get to accelerate their um, uh, update cadence from you know doing a client side deployment model to mm -hmm. hey just a server push. There you go. And last but not least, you know they can Outlook can actually incrementally update their you know UI like we kind of talked about before, right? right? They just plug into the room finder into their existing experience and they don't have to rewrite their entire thing. So I just I just really love the um, this uh, this outlook thing because it's just such a success story. I'm very happy to see that. I love that you can now get all of these new components not in a year, not in six months, or not on you know whatever cadence that your company decides, but as the components become live and available. I think that's incredibly mm -hmm. powerful for devs because what we want is for our code to be used tomorrow, so we can get feedback from users as soon as possible. So I love this. I think this is fantastic. And what a game changer for what we would call a legacy desktop app, right? It goes to show you use modern web tech to change legacy desktop apps. It's just goodness all around. Mm -hmm. Ah, you jumped out of your screen too fast. I actually wanted to see something ah. else. He's got a secret oh. browser window open that I don't think he showed you. So we're, we're going to have a look. Um, Let me go back. <laughs> let's go back. I know for a fact that the Edge team, and all of you who are on Edge Canary, by the way, also know this, the Edge team is probably one of the best for being very open about what issues they're working on right now. So, Lemon, do you want to show us what issues you're working on for WebView right now? What are yes. the feedback? Look at this. Questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, like we mentioned before, you know, for, for WebView 2 development, we're really working very closely with the developer community and ISVs mm -hmm. and kind of using their feedback as guidance as to what we should build, right? right. So what I'm showing right here is a uh, feedback repo for just the WebView 2 product. This is where our developers kind of just hang out with the community and be like, hey, tell us what you think, uh, tell us what you're building, and we'll, 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 just, we'll just incorporate your feedback into our product. That's there are right. about, I want to say, close to 200 different issues now. Hey, that's and, a lot. Uh, yeah, and we, we look at that every day, and we just incorporate that into our kind of planning um, uh, planning phases. And a lot of our mm -hmm. release features from the past year are just direct outcome of these you know, interactions with developers. So here, I just want to say huge thank you to the community. Um, it's been really awesome working with you. you know, just keep it up. Tell us what you think, and we will build a fantastic product for you. So I just want to reiterate what Lemon just said to make sure that everyone heard that. If you're on the Edge preview builds, thank you so much for submitting feedback. As you can see, they track it and they flag it and they put it on their roadmap. As Lemon has mentioned many, many times, their roadmap is decided by your feedback. So thank you so much for taking all of the time to give us that feedback. Now, Lemon, one thing we do with all of our guests, if we, come back, come back. Where'd you go? Oh, <laughs> Come back. Um, Sorry, one me, thing we uh, do with all of face. our guests, and this is always a fun surprise for everyone, uh, is we ask all of our guests to assign homework to our audiences because you know your product best and you know what, how you want to co-create with our communities the best. So what is the piece of homework you'd like to assign our build audience today? Yeah, so there are, if I may just ask for two things. One is um, uh, go to aka.ms slash m365 SK128. That will lead you to the kind of full WebView talk, WebView 2 talk, where you can hear the full landscape of things, learn about what WebView 2, uh, what kind of problems WebView 2 can solve for you, and get you just started in like 10 or 5 or 10 minutes. And the other thing is go to aka.ms slash WebView 2, which is our documentation where you can really learn the kind of all the details you need about WebView 2. And you can get started there. It also has a link to our feedback repo. So Watch our talk, uh, watch, uh, go to our documentation, mm -hmm. try out WebView 2, and let us know what you think. Look at that. Pretty simple. Watch their talk, look at the docs, try out WebView 2, and give, you, give them your feedback, and you know they're going to act on it. Thank you, Lemon, mm -hmm. so much for being here with us. Um, you will be seeing my feedback shortly. All right. Have a great Thank build. Have fun at your session. You too. Bye. All right. Hopefully, you listen to Lemin. Uh, next up, coming up in just a few seconds, we are going to wrap with Rohan after the break. It sounds way, way cooler than it is. <laughs>